So I wanted to focus on tiny soldering and sawing skills with this video because a lot of people have problems cutting things really small and then you also can hurt yourself pretty bad. So I'm going to show you how I don't cut my fingers doing this and how I do this like the techniques I use to cut it out of the metal without bending the metal or getting it stuck. So first thing, I made a bunch of pizza patterns. And I'm going to have to use a couple of these because I'm going to be using each part as a design cutout. So I'm using printer label paper. And this doesn't actually use ink, it uses a thermal paper. So technically you have unlimited prints as long as you have the paper for it. And it comes in really handy when you want to make patterns to stick to stuff. So for the little pepperonis, I'm going to use copper. And I'm going to want to place my pattern near one of the edges. And the reason why I do this is I don't want to put it here in the middle and have to cut out to it or drill a hole close to it and do, cut it out. I want to be able to cut in right here and do everything and still have all this material left. And then I'm just going to put one on the silver sheet. So if you noticed, I leave a decent amount of the uh, paper around here is because it needs something to anchor down. If you just cut directly on your lines and then try to cut this out, you'll actually pick up on the pattern and you can rip your pattern off and as soon as dust gets underneath that, you can't stick it back down. So for the brass, I'm going to be using two pieces because I'm going to be cutting out a back plate in the brass and I'm going to cut out the top crust area. So when it comes to the sizing of these sheet metals, they are a little bit off from one another. So the copper is about 0 0.7. Silver is 0.5. And the brass is about 0.8. So you can do, you can use different thicknesses if you really want to. This is just what I happen to have on hand and what I use a lot. Silver is the one that I actually have multiple sizes of. But everything else, the copper and brass, it's usually these sizes. And to cut all, all of these out, I'm gonna be using a Green Lion saw frame. And I'm going to be using a 2-0 saw blade for all of these. And if you have a hard time with this particular size of saw blade, you can go up or down depending on which one works better for you. Also, I'm gonna make sure to use lubricant. I have two different ones. This is a dry, more of like a wax. And then this one is really liquidy, like a cream almost. So since I'm on the topic of the saw frame, I need to announce the winner of the giveaway from last video. And you won't only be getting a saw frame, you'll also be getting a shirt and a pin from Green Lion Studio. And the winner is this person right here. I'll be sending you an email, getting in contact with you for what size shirt you need and a shipping address for all of your items. As for everyone else, I'm sorry that you weren't able to win anything and I'm going to be trying to do this more often, either with other companies or with some things that I make. So keep a lookout in future videos for more giveaways. And now let's get back to the video.
So when sawing stuff out like this, I like to use the bench pin that I have that has these little weird cutouts here that allow me to put this in like that. And then as I'm cutting, I can keep it up against the wall here so I don't lose my piece and it's so it's as stable as possible. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut out the large piece, which will be the whole backing. If you notice, I have this pushed up as much as I can, so the saw is the back of the saw is touching the wood, and I'm continually pushing this into the saw frame, just lightly. Okay, so for this. I have it lined up with the line I'm going to be cutting, and I try to take away materials that are closest, basically anything that is part of the biggest part of the material I want to keep. Anything that's small like this, I want to take off first. And the reason for that is if you go the opposite way, you're going to end up with a small piece right here, and it can bend really easily. And if it's all one giant piece, it's harder to bend. So now I'm going to make sure that this is over the wood, and then I'm going to cut the straight line. And I blow off the dust as much as I can, so I can see. Also, when cutting patterns like this, you got to keep in mind that the saw blade itself has a width that it's going to take away. So I try to go on one side of the uh, pattern itself, usually on the outside, and don't go on it or you can actually take away with too much material. So now that I got this line straight, I can just turn and go around here and then come back. But I'm going to cut this whole piece off so I can get a clean cut in from there. So another thing, when you're going to be cutting through something, make sure your fingers are not in the way. And if they are in the way, make sure that it's going to hit your bench pin first. So it would stop before it hit your fingers. So now I'm just going to come in and start this. And do the same thing as before, just follow the line. Okay, so I got that and I cut a little bit past it. So when I cut this final line, it'll take this off. So if your bench pin doesn't have these two side pieces and you only have this single cut, you can still do this. It's just, it makes it a lot easier with those. You can even, if you want to, drill a hole directly through your bench pin and then cut a line into it so you can fit blades into it and it'll be just the same as this. So I'm bringing this back over to the wood so it's supported. And what I'm doing is holding both pieces with my finger, so if I push a little too hard, it can bend this and pinch this and break my blade. So right before you see that you're going to be completing your cut, I make sure to push all the way up against this and then go very slowly. Just a little tiny up and down motion to it. Because if you 
take full strokes there, you can um, actually fling this across the room, and you'll lose it like I do every time that happens. So now you have this tiny piece right here that you can draw. I just pick this up and leave it on the bench pin like that. And there we go. There's our first little piece. So now I'm going to cut out just the top crust part of this. And same thing as last time, wherever area has the less material, I try to cut that off first and then work my way into the piece. And then I'm going to cut each side, so all I have to do is cut that one line across and it'll pop this piece off. And you can cut past it to make sure that it comes off once you cut that line. So I'm running into a problem right now where this is too big for the bench pin and the space that's available. So I'm going to have to move. And yeah, you can touch the back of your saw blade with your finger and it doesn't do anything. It's completely smooth. Just make sure never to put it in front because it will cut right through your finger. There we go, there's a tiny piece. I'm just holding it there with my actual blade. And then I'm gonna grab some tweezers because if I try to pick that with my hand, it will probably fall. So that will be all of the crust, basically. Now I'm gonna cut out the cheese part. And this is also gonna get covered in um, solder to keep all of our little pepperonis on. So this you will use all the same techniques as the last piece, or not the last piece, the first piece that I did. So I actually made a mistake. I cut out too much of this pattern. I don't need the top crust piece of this. So, I can't really hold this anymore. So what I'm going to do is take a pair of pliers. And hold it like this. And cut the rest of it off. I'm actually going to file the little bit of this off that I don't want to risk cutting. There we go, there's our little cheese pad. Okay, now for the little pepperonis. So, I'm only going to cut three of these out, because the other one only has three, and after cutting out all the stuff for the first one to see if I could even make something this tiny, um, it basically can only fit three on there without messing up when soldering. So for this, I'm just going to cut straight in to it and come up on one of the sides of the circles for the pepperonis and stay on the outside of the uh, pattern. Because if I don't, it'll make them way too small. And these are very finicky when uh, you try to finish your cut 
because they just disappear if you drop them. There we go, there's one. So that tiny little thing is going to be one of the pepperonis. Which I didn't, didn't even measure this before to see how big it is. Yeah, it's... 1.3 millimeters, so around. So yeah, you just, I just have to do that uh, two more times, and in total you just have to do six of those little things. First time I was cutting it, I actually lost two of them, so keep that in mind if you're making this, that you you're probably going to lose little pieces. Also, it made like a little Mickey Mouse logo almost. Now I need to take the paper off of these before I start doing anything else. So I'm going to put a couple of my pieces on this honeycomb board so I can start soldering them together. So I'm going to need to flux these, but not too much because it will just bubble up and Everything will move around. When you're soldering stuff this small, little movements mean a lot. Yeah, it doesn't look like this is coming up very well on camera, so let me put this onto a charcoal block. Okay, so I'm going to put a little crust piece on the backplate crust. And it's going to be very sticky because the parts are so small and they have flux on them. And then I'm going to put a small piece of hard solder on here. And I want it to actually touch the uh, small piece in the back. And then the other piece, I'm just going to put another small piece of solder on it. And now I'm just going to heat them with my little torch. Very carefully. Because you can melt these real quick. Also going to keep a pair of tweezers in my hand. Just in case anything moves around. I can move it back. So I'm just kind of heating next to it to dry out the flux. There we go, that piece should be together now. Now for 
with the silver piece. All I want to do is get the solder to melt. There we go. So now with both of these, I'm going to have to put them into the pickling solution to clean them off. Actually, they don't look as dirty as they should after that. So I might be able to just put them together now. So I'm going to use a second pair of uh, tweezers to place everything. And it looks like my silver piece is a little off. And I'll be able to trim that once I get these two put together. There we go. That should be all one piece now. And now I'm just going to quench it. Has a lot of cleanup that's needed, but let's pickle this real quick. So here it is after I got it out of the pickling solution. And you'll notice that the top part up here is silver now. That's just because I got uh, the silk solder up on it. And all that will clean off. And then any of the parts that don't line up properly will be shaved down once we get the little pepperonis on. So to do that, I'm going to flux this again, just on the top piece. And not too much. And then I'm going to use a piece of medium solder. Actually, I'm going to use a piece of easy solder. And just kind of place it on the top here. And then I'm going to heat that until it just melts. Alright, so it looks like it's still usable as it is. So I'm going to add my little pepperoni pieces. And once I have them on there, I'll move them around to get them kind of where I want them to go. And I'm trying to separate them as much as possible because when that solder flows, it can move everything around. And they can actually stack on top of one another or turn over and kind of stack up. And that won't look right, so. Here goes nothing. I also have to make sure that they don't move around as I'm heating this. With little pieces like this, I like to heat around them to get everything up to temperature instead of just focusing on top because it'll start melting parts. So I'm just looking for that solder to flow real quick. Like that. That should be good. So I'm going to see if these pop off. Nope, they look like they all have solder all around the bottom of them. So I can go and pickle this piece now. So here it is after I got it out of the pickling solution. I need to clean up the sides and everything to make sure everything lines up properly. And then I need to solder this uh, post onto the back. And it's a sterling silver pre-made post. I'm gonna use some of my pliers to hold this. I'm basically just filing it down so both 
And I can actually use a bigger file for this. So there, right there is pretty much how you want it to be all the way around. So there it is. And all the sides are nice and cut down. I'm just going to put it onto the block like this. And I'm going to put a piece of extra easy solder on here. Put some flux on this. And I'm going to put a little bit of flux on the post. And before I put the solder actually on there, I'm going to heat this. Just to dry up a lot of the flux. And just place that in the center. Or wherever you decide you're going to put your post. So now I'm just going to heat that up until it melts. And I'm going to have the post in my other hand with some pliers. Or not pliers, but um, tweezers. So as soon as this melts, I put it in place and be done. So it just melted. I'm going to put it right on top of it. And there we go. So it should be all one piece now. I'm going to have to pickle this again and then do all the finishing work. Okay, so here it is out of the pickling solution. And it needs to be cleaned up a bit and I'm gonna use one of my rotor tools to do so. So here we go. It's all nice and cleaned up. And what I'm going to want to do is polish the posts on both of them. So before I polish them, actually, I'm going to go over it with a wire wheel to get any of the little areas in the top of the pizza. So I'm just going to use a polishing pad and some polishing compound real quick on just the posts so that they're smooth so there we go all I need to do is clean these off with some um, soap and water to get all the polishing compound off and then I'm going to spray them with a sealer which is this sealer right here And then they should be good to go. So that's about it for the earrings. If you found this video helpful at all, or if you just want to leave a like, feel free to do so. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And if you have any suggestions, same thing, leave a comment. And if you want to be notified when I upload new videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And if you really want to, you can click the little bell icon. Well, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.